In April of 2021, the South African government entered into a partnership with the Prem Rawat Foundation, authorizing the foundation's peace education program throughout all of the country's 240 prisons. The Department of Correctional Services recognized the peace education program for playing a powerful role in helping incarcerated people rehabilitate and reintegrate into society. This day is important, uh, Program Director, and please allow me to take this opportunity to say we appreciate the work that is done by the Prem Rawat Foundation within the Department of Correctional Services. We are quite elated today to join hands with the, Dr. Prem Rawat, the founder of the Peace Education Program, who was shortlisted, of course, as we heard, for the Nobel Peace Prize. Peace Prize and was recognized internationally for his efforts in bringing peace dignity and prosperity to mankind. We are inspired by your message, which focuses on the possibility for each human being, regardless of their circumstances, to experience inner peace. Ladies and gentlemen, in November 2012, Dr. Prem Rawat was invited to speak at his Wonder Vital Correctional Facility to 375 members, I mean correctional officials and inmates. This proved to be a very successful and memorable event. The signing of the MOU then cannot overemphasize the importance of working together uh, between uh, the two organization, organizations as a team. And the, uh, we hope that we are going to also yield uh, sound and objective results that do not only glorify us as the spiritual component within the framework of corrections, but will have a meaningful impact on the lives of the South African uh, citizens. The Prem Rawat Foundation has to remember that the work that they are doing is uh, important within the greater effort to make South Africa a better place. We are all, of course, supporting the National Development Plan, that is Vision 2030. Continue with the sterling work that you have started to support us in correcting the offending behavior and ensuring that those in need during this unprecedented uh, time of uh, COVID-19 and beyond are also assisted. We commend your work into God's hands. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Great honor for me to be here today. And of all the things I can say, I'll try to say a few things that maybe will touch us as human beings. Because right now, the whole world is being affected by this pandemic, the COVID-19, this little invisible virus. But believe me, believe me, there was another virus before this COVID-19 virus that was affecting the world. The greed, the hunger for power, the misinformation, the disrespect for mankind, the disrespect for nature, the disrespect for each other, the disrespect for religion, the disrespect for everything that was going on. But no doctor told us that that's a virus. No doctor told us that can hurt you. So we accepted and we went along our way, hoping one day things will improve. I was four years old when I first talked about peace. What was that like for me? People ask me that. Today I'm not four years old. But I'm faced against the same problems that I was when I was four. 
people could not believe that I was talking about peace. People could not believe that there would be peace on this earth. When, <laughs> and I was just told today that those five prisons that shut down in Talangana are still shut down. And if this is possible, then this too is a testament to what we as human beings can accomplish on the face of this earth. It's one thing to make great halls where justice is dealt out. It is also another thing to build great institutions where people are locked away. It is another thing of mankind, another facet of human beings to actually take those and shut them down because they're not needed. Not needed. This too is a testimony to the human accomplishment. But the amount of pessimistic attitudes that exist out there. Now one thing I was thinking about is a beacon. The difference between beacon and a light. In a way, Beacon does give out a little light, but not enough to illuminate anything. Airplanes have little beacons underneath them. I know. I fly them. They don't give out any light. You can't see much. But they let other people know there is danger here. There is danger. That's what beacons are good for. Why do I tell you about beacon? There is a lot of beacons around in this world. Danger, 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 no peace, it can't happen, this is terrible, that's terrible, it will never happen. What do you want in your life? Do you want beacon or do you want a light that illuminates? Light does not create anything, neither does beacon. Beacon tells you there is danger here, but the light will not only show you the danger, but illuminate what that danger is. And the light that I talk about is the light of hope. What do human beings need in the time of hopelessness. When you hear the word hopelessness, do you think of somebody else? Because you shouldn't be. That hopelessness, I'm not asking you for a confession, <laughs> but that hopelessness has touched you. That has touched you. And your want to have hope in your life in that moment has also touched you. Because without that hope, nothing is illuminated. Plenty of beacons don't come here, don't come here. That is, <laughs> that is a lighthouse. You know what a lighthouse says out there? Don't, whatever you do, <laughs> don't come here. A lot of people think lighthouse is really wonderful because it's like saying, come here. But that's not what it's saying. It's actually saying, don't come 
here. Stay away from here. There's rocks here. <laughs> There's land here. Don't come here. There are people who may misinterpret it. Oh, look, I see the lighthouse. Yeah, but that's what you need to stay away from. There is another light you need. The light that comes from within you. Your hopefulness, your strength. In South Africa, When I came here, it was a different world. At the airport, there were signs for the bathroom. Who could go in that bathroom? I was told how one had to sit in the car depending on who was driving. I could not stay at the main house of what this one house was made available to me by this wonderful doctor. I could stay in his guest house, but I could not stay in his main house. They wanted me to have separate meetings. I said, no, everybody, I'm not here for this. I'm not going to play this game. I don't like this game. And in that time, at that time, there were so many that were hoping that one day, this apartheid will go away. And it'll be a different world. Apartheid did go away. <laughs> Officially, unofficially, right? Because there's another country exactly <laughs> on the, <laughs> kind of on the other side, well, not quite, where apparently it doesn't exist anymore. Apparently. The name of the disease isn't apartheid, it is the disrespect of one human being to another human being, period. When we cannot see that each one of us is made out of the same elements as the next person. That our ambitions are not any different than the next person. That what we want to achieve is not that different. When we forget what is a need and what is a want. Think about it. What is the difference between a need and a want? If your wants are not fulfilled, you will be disappointed. If your needs are not fulfilled, <laughs> you will be slightly dead. You need, you need this breath. It's not a question of want. You want a nice radio. You don't need a nice radio. You want a nice radio. And if you don't get it, you may be slightly disappointed, but you won't die. If you stop breathing, you will. When in this world wants become more important than the needs, 
you get a very confused world. Killing each other becomes nothing. Excuse. All the people that get killed, oh, we're trying to defend ourselves. <laughs> hey, trying to defend yourself from what? You are bent over trying to eliminate every single living person. I mean, how are the countries on the, clear on the other side of the world? Nobody is coming and attacking. Well, we're trying to protect ourselves. This one country, all these bodies were arriving, their own citizens, the bodies were arriving in a body bag. What was their solution to the problem? Stop showing it. Problem fixed. Really? Is it that easy? Is it that simple? So now, the issue becomes, We need to address the need of the people in this world. Peace education program is not about judging people. That the courts have already done. Sentence has been passed. The peace education program aims to take those people for whom too many doors have been shut without passing judgment whether those doors were shut by the society or their own actions or by the courts, whatever, without passing any judgment to help them find a way back to themselves. That's what peace education program. People ask me, what does, what, how does it work? How does it work? It works by providing a mirror, by providing an opportunity. The first time I went to this prison in San Antonio, and there I was. Oh, it was a tough, it was a tough prison, believe me. And there was all these people incarcerated, and they were tough. Big tattoos. Big muscles, I mean they were big. Strike fear in you, just looking at them, like, wow. We sat down. Came to this room where they used to hold the peace education class. And there on the wall, was this beautiful illustration of this story. And the story went that one day, I'll, I'll really abbreviate the story, that the, there was a farmer and he, would, he had some sheep and he would take them, herd them into the jungle. One day as the he, farmer was coming back with his sheep, he saw a lion cub lying on the side of the road. So he picked up the lion cub, brought him home, nursed him back to health. And when the lion cub got healthy, he put him with the sheep. So now every day, the lion cub would go out with the sheep and come back with the sheep, and he would play with the sheep, and he would hang out with the sheep. Quite a few years went by like that. One day, To the great surprise of everyone there, they heard a very loud roar. And it was a full big lion coming out of the jungle. And hearing this roar, all the sheep just scattered, 
hiding. And the lion cub, who wasn't that little anymore, also went hiding. The lion saw all the sheep hiding and he was very pleased. So when he saw the, <laughs> the lion cub hiding, he went over to that cub and said, why are you hiding? And the little cub said, oh, please, please, please don't eat me. I'm just an innocent little sheep. Don't eat me. I haven't done anything wrong. Please, please, please. The lion said, what are you, what are you, what are you talking about? You are not a little sheep. You are a lion. He goes, anything you say. Just don't eat me. Please spare me. Spare my life. He said, come here. So oh, please, please, come here, come here. Let me show you who you are. Took him by the lake. Said, look at your reflection. You're not a sheep. You're a lion. Learn to roar like a lion. It had an incredible impact on me when I saw that illustration, that of all the stories they had heard, they were touched by that story. Big tattoos, big guys, but they were touched by a story of a lion cub because he had forgotten who he was. He was hanging out with the sheep for so long that he forgot who he was. We too forget. We forget that we are human beings. That we can think. That we can understand. That we can articulate. That we can sing. You just heard that. That we can create incredible instruments. We can have incredible inventions. We can help each other. When it comes to kindness and tenderness, human beings have amazing capacity to have that kindness, to have that tenderness. All we are taught from the very beginning is how we are different. I would like to teach everybody how similar we are. It is the similarity that we have. It doesn't matter where we are. It doesn't matter we speak Japanese. You think the Japanese say something different? I mean, do you think in the morning, <laughs> when the son and the husband come out of their room and the mother is there preparing breakfast, she says anything different? Like, what is your bank account number? No, she asked them the same thing. I've made some breakfast, would you like some? What do you want for breakfast today? Good morning. Says the same thing. You think an Australian kid who gets hurt says something different to his mother? When he comes crying, holding his finger up, do you think he says anything different? Maybe he says it in a different language, in a different accent, but he says the same thing. Pain, sorrow, suffering, if these can be the same for us, why not joy? We have learned to share our sorrow we have learned to share our anger. We have learned to share our suffering. We have not learned to share our joy. And we can't even share it with our own family. <laughs> we cannot even share that wonderfulness. What do we share with our family every morning? <laughs> Through the world, we are ready to say good morning. To our family, we are not. That's stupid. 
But that's what happens. When the out wants outdo the needs, this is what will happen. As human beings, we need to remember we are human beings. And these are the opportunities that we have. These are the things that peace education program shed light on. And that is why this peace education program is so effective. Not trying to convert anybody to any religion, to any way of thinking, but nothing, 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 nothing. Just be a human being. That's all. Be a lit candle. One thing that I have been saying, <laughs> a lot of the interviews, I love it. It's the law of nature. If you bring a lit candle next to an unlit candle, what do you think is going to happen? A lit candle, touch the lit candle to the unlit candle, and what do you think is going to happen? It'll light the unlit candle. This is the law of hope. This is the law of hope. When that happens, something remarkable has happened. Light now is coming from that candle that was not lit. And now not only that candle that was not lit has the possibility of producing light, but now it can light another unlit candle. Two things. <laughs> two things happened. Not just one, two things happened. And it'll happen again, and again, and again, and again. And there is no limit. Be. Be a lit candle. If you are not, find a lit candle. So you can be a lit Now, how long should you stay lit? Till you are not lit anymore. All the way, 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 all the way. You bring that unlit candle, you can't see it. Bring the lit candle and you will see the unlit candle. You will see where it needs to be lit. This is the possibility. As today, we are here. As much as we are here to sign the instruments, the memory of understanding, for the peace education program, the memorandum. We are here really to acknowledge, to acknowledge this possibility of mankind, not just a group of people, but of mankind, to be lit, to light each other, to give each other the possibility, the kindness, the possibility, the hope of being that person 
who can bring more and more and more and more joy to this world. More and more and more understanding to this world. The light that I talk about is no spiritual light, but it's the practical light. The practical light of empathy between human beings. Sympathy between human beings. Forgiveness between human beings. Friendship between human beings. Goodness between human beings. Caring between human beings. That's the light I'm talking about. Not some light that, you know, <laughs> one day will appear out of nowhere. That would be nice too. But <laughs> this light that we carry inside of us, that we need today, I mean, look where the world is going. It's not headed in a good direction, believe me. It's not. You know, people who in 2008 destroyed the economy, destroyed so many lives. Nobody is even accountable. You look at, you look at, I, I know there are some countries, not all countries are like this, but I know there are some countries, and the fact that you're going to get locked up or not is not a question of what you did, but who was defending you. It was a good, really good lawyer. He walked free. <laughs> it was a bad lawyer. He ran. <laughs> huh? that's, that's, that's how it is. Not like that everywhere, but there are countries that that's how it is. We need justice for all. Same justice for all. Kindness for all. Understanding for all. Not frustration, not anger, not fear. That's not going to work. That never has worked, never will work. So that's what I wanted to say and I wanted to talk about. I think it's, um, I think it's remarkable what is about to happen today because I think it's so powerful. So thank you very much for inviting me to come and talk about this. Thank you. It's so wonderful to see this partnership having come, uh, you know, for so many years and how it continues to grow stronger and stronger as we cement this really, really wonderful partnership with the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding today. So as we prepare for that, I would like to uh, invite once again the Reverend Dr. Mkatini onto the stage to sign the Memorandum of Understanding. Thank you so much, Reverend Dr. Mkatini. I would now like to invite Prem Rawat to sign the Memorandum of, under of Understanding, after which we will have a socially distanced photo opportunity. And there we have it. All of the pages signed, initialed, and sanitized.